Welcome to another amazing episode of Elephant Pick. I am the host, Frank Roth. Uh, Elephant Pick, you can catch us on YouTube. Uh, like and subscribe, you know, it means a lot. It definitely helps with the algorithms, which is something that we're going to talk plenty about. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, Nova Big Stepper in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Nova Big Stepper. Welcome to Elephant Pick. Welcome to my interview series. Some people call it a podcast. I call it an interview series where I interview people that have interesting stories, life stories that have, that are doing something with their lives that I feel like, damn, like if you have an interesting story, I want to to, to showcase it. I want I want I want to spread light on it. And um, you're definitely somebody that 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 I've heard of for a little while now. That um, I felt it was the right time to bring. Uh, over here. So thank you. Thank you for, for coming. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So Nova Big Stepper. Who is Nova Big Stepper? Nova Big Stepper. I'm um I'm an artist. I'm very versatile. I sing. I rap. I was born in South Carolina, but I was raised in Connecticut. So I'm from Connecticut. And um, yeah, man, I just, like you said, interesting stories. Like I just, I came from humble beginnings. Obviously, I'm still at humble beginnings. And um. You know, I've just been pursuing pursuing his music career and just taking it full fledged. And for the longest of time, I always said like, "This is this is what I'm gonna do, like for sure. Like this is what I'm locked in on." Even if I wasn't putting the work in, I always vocally said it out loud. So I was always just like putting it into the air, manifesting it. But I'm just I'm here now. You know what I mean? And I just that's who I am. Nice, nice. Now we're gonna talk. I wanna I wanna I'm curious more about like what you said, South Carolina. That's where I was born. South yeah. Carolina, born in South Carolina, raised in Connecticut. Yeah. You give me real New York-y vibes. I hear that all the time. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get back to. I want to know what where did Nova Big Stepper come from? The actual name, like how did you come up with the name? So originally it was so I just wanted it to be Nova, but Nova wasn't available. Like it was already an artist that yeah, had I the name. A lot of Novas. Yeah, yeah, it was already a thing. So uh, before my old name was Nova Kane, uh, and it had some uh, little corny meaning behind it. It was like music that numbs you type. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I was. <laughs> I was Nova Kane, and then I'm like, I wanted to change it because it was getting kind of mixed up with this rock band. It's like a rock band named Nova Kane, and I'm like, I want something that's gonna be different. Mm. So like I said, Nova was taken, and then I was just chilling with my girl one day with my fiance, and she's like, we just going through names, trying different things, and she's like, why don't you do Big Stepper? I was like, yeah, I got a ring to it. I like mm. that, I like that. Now see, at the time, I wasn't aware of the urban dictionary meaning of you Big Stepper. You didn't know? Nah, man. Nah, I wouldn't have did it. Did your fiance know? She ain't know either, nah. So y'all just freestyle that? We freestyle. Cause yo, look, cause to me, I'm like big stepper. Like to me, it sounds like the way I mean it is like everything I do, I do it big. I put my best foot forward. So if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna lock in on something and I say that this is this is what I'm doing, I'm gonna do it big. So mm. I was thinking big stepper, like that was a thinking like, you know like what I mean? nah. Nah. Boom, like, nah. Nah. <laughs> okay, uh, nah. Okay. When I found that out, I was like, nah. Okay. No, nah, that's not what I mean. All right, so let, let's make this clear. Can, can you let the people know real quick? Real quick. We're, we're not talking about putting somebody in, in six feet under. Nah. We're talking about doing it big, <laughs> right? Facts. Okay, just making sure. Because yeah, no, nah, we, we ain't talking about that at all. Like, um, if I'm honestly, anybody who's that version of a big stepper would look at my music and be like, man, listen, ain't no way. Because I got love music. <laughs> I got music yeah. where I'm talking about love, being in love. Like, I got all kinds of different vibes, but... Ain't no, come on, ain't no big steppers out here talking about letting me know. But we still are big stepping, because whatever Nova does, she's doing it big. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. From Connecticut. Where in Connecticut? New Haven. New Haven. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard of certain hoods in Connecticut that ain't nothing to play with neither. Like, I heard they get busy out there, too. Like New get, Haven's one of them. Like, new, like that New Haven, I, I've heard, is, is one of the ports. Is Bridgeport? Is it Bridgeport? Bridgeport. That like, they get Harvard. busy out there. Yeah? Yeah. No, I mean, not that it's nothing to be proud of, obviously, nah, but I, it's... Yeah, they um, it definitely gets a little bit crazy, and it's been like that for a while. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's getting better, but for a while, like they was on like the top list of like most dangerous cities for a while, and I feel like a lot of people was taking pride in it. And it was like kind of weird. Never but, understood that. Yeah, me either. It's like, yeah, we top danger, and it's like, nah, like that's not okay. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's weird to me because Yale was in 
New Haven. So like, I, it's just so crazy that Yale was right there and then literally a couple blocks down is like, they're shooing, like a lot. Like a couple blocks down from yeah. Yale, for real. I have this theory that, you know, especially with these colleges, right? Like everybody that's in the college, all right, you're, you're in the safe zone. Yeah. But once you step out, that's when the poverty really comes in. You know, like literally as soon as you step out the university, cause that's that's the cultural center. That's where all the money is in, that, in that, these particular cities. But once you step out of the colleges and stuff, it's the hood right there. Yeah, it's the trenches. They call it, and, and people call them the townies. Like, oh, stay away from the townies. The people that oh, live. What do they call it? That actually live. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that phrase before. Like, when I've gone upstate, when I was back back in college, when, I, when I've gone upstate, they were like, yo, yeah, the townies is over there, so we don't want to go. So, but anyways, can you talk to me about the 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 hip-hop scene in, in Connecticut? You, I, I don't really hear too much about that. Is there a scene out there? Like, how, how is that? Um, there, I'm gonna say there is, there is, like, there's very, there's some very talented people out there, like, I'm one of them, you know what I'm saying, like, and we're right. starting to, we're starting to make, make noise, like, there's really good producers out there, um, in terms of the music scene, I don't want to say there's not a music scene, like, they're doing their thing, I'm just, I'm not really necessarily a part of the music scene, it's not a big music scene, but it does exist, I don't want to downplay it, but I kind of just, I really just really do everything online, so it's like, a lot of the time, people be like, Damn, you you from Connecticut? Like I thought you was from New York. Like you said, like everybody, like they just you they hear my deep energy. voice and my vibe, and they think that I'm from New York. So they don't even think about the fact that I'm from the town. So people come across me and they won't even be like, let's work. That's from there because they don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, um, but there's there's definitely a music scene out there. Some some talent for sure. Okay. Okay, Absolutely. that's what's up. So, what inspired you to start with the music? Because like obviously there's something that you said you wanted to do, but what was that? Like, yo, I'm going to I'm going to pursue music for real. Um, like I, I always just like sing other people's songs and just like, you know what I'm saying? Just like singing in the shower and singing outside. And but like it was it was one point where like somebody was like, yo, you can actually sing. And I was like, what? Like, I had no clue. <laughs> no, nah, seriously. Know. I didn't know. I didn't you, you, know. You can't tell that you can hold a note. No, nah, I didn't know. Like, I just I, I, I really didn't know I could sing. I just did it for so long. And so it was like, yo, you can really sing. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I started singing more, but like, I started putting out music in 2019. Like, I started, like, I released my first tape in 2019, Novocaine EP, and um, it got a really good response. So I'm like, damn, all right, cool. Like, they vibing with it. Regardless, even if it was did terrible, I was gonna keep going. But it just kind of was. It gave me a big push to just keep going. Um, but yeah, like, that's that's really what it was. Like, okay. and you know, I obviously have musical inspirations. Like Chris Brown, I looked up to a lot. You know, when I was young, so I always sang a lot of his records and. And whatnot, and so I just I just kept moving with it. And in terms of rapping, like anytime people ask me who I'm inspired by, like I don't know, like it's crazy, oh. like cause when I was young, like in the cafeteria, like you know what I'm saying, playing beats yeah. on the table, just rapping. I just I couldn't tell you where that came from. Like I I really don't know. I really can't. It's crazy. It's the craziest thing. I just I don't know. It was just like it was in me almost. But it's but it's here now. It's here now. And it's here to stay. It's here to stay. <laughs> and that, yeah. and that's, that's all that matters. That's what's up. So. Uh, in, in one of your in one of your reels, your Instagram reels, you said you quit your job to pursue music. Yeah. Right. So can you talk to us about that? Because that's a big step, yeah. and no pun intended. But that, that's a <laughs> that, that's a big step in life. You know, that's, yeah. that's jumping off the cliff. That wasn't easy. Yeah. So I, can can you run us through your your thought process while you were were making that transition in your life, and how how obviously is is going is going well. There's a lot of I, I just talk to us about that 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 whole moment. In yeah. your life, um, so I'm. I've always really been real big on like faith. You know what I'm saying. So I'm. I'm a very spiritual per person. I'm into God. So like I just kind of like follow the lead. You know what I mean. And my fiance, we was both working at the time. We was working at T-Mobile, and she kept telling me for the longest of time, and maybe like a year. She's like, "Yo, quit, quit." She always believed in me before. Like, bef when I, I it was a time and period where I started working at T-Mobile, and I was like, "Yo, you know what? Like, I'm making good money. Like." I could chill a little bit, you know what I mean? I wasn't making no music, I wasn't focused on music. And she's like, she let me do my thing, but after a while she's like, yo, you tell me you wanna do music, I'm not seeing no music, like, <laughs> what do you wanna do? Like, right. And it just was like a big wake up call for me, so I started like pursuing it, and then it came to a point where she's like, yo, quit. Like, I believe in you, I believe in this, like, quit. I'll hold everything down. I'll keep working. I'm that's like, yeah, bold. but that's it's bold. It's bold. It's bold. <laughs> it easy. She's like, yo, I'll hold everything down. Just like, just quit and just focus. Cause I feel like the moment you fully lock in, it's gonna happen for you. Like, just focus. Like, cause I be spreading my focus all around different places, and it's like, 
you know what it is. It's like where, where how, do, how do they say it? Where attention goes, energy flows. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when I'm working and I'm stressed out with work, I can't really, I, I guess I wasn't always the best multitasker. So long story short, I, um, one day I just was fed up, man. They was transferring me all around. It was just like, God was like, yo, leave, leave. And I was like, all right, I'm out, man. I quit. I quit. And somebody in my job was like, yeah, you'll be back. And that just put a fire. Oof. Ooh, it put a fire. <laughs> it put a fire. I was like, I will. All right, cool. We'll see. Boom. So I quit. And then I started doing Uber, though. So it's like, I did quit, but I was Ubering. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was, it was more flexible for me because obviously I could make my own hours. I could work when I want, do what I want. So, like, it helped me, you know, be able to do what I was doing. You ever doing. encounter any weirdos? Yo, you know what's crazy? I did a little over a thousand trips. And nah, I did have one guy. See, that's why I don't do Lyft, though. Lyft is crazy. It's Lyft, the same thing. Nah, the customer base is different, bro. Right. You, you're about <laughs> to break this down. Yo, listen, listen. All right, this sounds crazy, but like, I don't know if it's because it's a little bit cheaper. I don't know what it is. But like, Uber was real. Like, the people were real, like, professional. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a five, I was a five-star driver, so for me, it was good yeah. both ways. But the um, Lyft was just, like, different. Like, it was this one guy, like, he got in a car. And he had a ski mask on. I said, it's oh, over. Oh, no. I said, it's over. He was in the back. Seat. I said, I'm done. Ice he had the push ice tea. Oh, I man. said, yo, I'm out of here. But he was good, though. It was just cold outside, and that was just the vibe. But it's like that energy just be like, <laughs> yo, he you literally. told me one story. Yo, he least. literally bust a trap, basically. Like, I was the Uber for the, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I realized what was going on. I'm like, yo, word. <laughs> I right, damn, it's like that. So yeah, it's like it, it gets weird, bro. It gets Yo, weird. you could have gotten in a lot of trouble for that. Yeah, it was crazy. Even knowing. That's what that's what I'm. That's what it looked like. I'm put it like that. It looked like that's it what looked he was like doing. That. Yeah, it looked like so, that. All right, so people, oh, okay. Weird vibes, bro. Weird vibes. But I, I feel like Uber, you could find the same kind of situation. I'm sorry, but I digress. I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah. But no. you were you were working in, uh, in Uber. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then so um, and then you know I was Ubering in between, and then I I took that time to. Uh, learn how to engineer for myself. Mm -hmm. So like I, I took the bread that I had and I bought the we, we well the bread that we had and I got the equipment that I needed and I was like yo I'm gonna just lock in and I'm gonna learn how to engineer because I don't I don't I'm not gonna have the bread to pay for the sessions. So I spent that time that first year of me not working just like really learning my equipment and you know just progressing my sound. And then eventually it got to a point where like you know, the music was actually like, it was doing good. Like people was following me, Ch checks was coming in from, you know, distro kid or whatever. And so I told her, I'm like, all right, cool. Now we at a point where like, you should quit your job too. Oof. And we just both just do this shit. Gangster. Let's just do it. Who cares? Like, wow. it's not like we balling or nothing and we had all the means to do it, but we had the faith, you know what I mean? So I was like, let's just do it. Let's just go full fledged. And so she took a little bit of time, you know what I mean? Cause that sounds real unstable yeah. now, like you're bugging. <laughs> You're bugging. So she quit. And then it's just, it was, it was up after that. Like we got a couple pages together that started buzzing and people know us as a unit. And then they know me by myself. They know her by herself. So we, we just took a, leap, a big leap, like you said, off the cliff and it's been working. So if you had to give advice to any artist that is looking to make that leap, you, what would you tell them? Just do it? Um, okay. I see look, I feel like things are easier said than done sometimes, you know right. what I'm saying? And I don't want to be unrealistic with the advice that I'm giving. I would say just do it if you have like an unshakable faith that it's gonna happen. If you got an unshakable faith that's gonna happen and you you believe you could really make this happen, do it. It don't gotta be realistic though, because it's with this career path, like it's really not a realistic path. Thing. When you think of, when you think of what realistic is, you think of nine to five, white picket fence stuff. That's a that's attainable. Yeah. All of it's attainable, but I'm talking about outside of the the box. You know what I mean? Like if you're somebody that could think outside of that and you see greatness for yourself, and you have faith, like it just gotta be a little bit. You just gotta have you just gotta have some type of faith. I think yeah, do it, do it. I mean, unless you're somebody who's really good at multitasking, you could work the job and you could come home and you could go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Which is a skill we also have to have as artists too but like i said i don't want to be unrealistic but definitely if you have unshakable faith that you can make it happen make it happen that's that's pretty good it's pretty it is it, it's motivational <laughs> i like i like asking people that because you know you never know who's watching and you might have just motivated the next person you know like and and i and i find that really dope so a lot, a lot of people, back to the day job stuff a lot of people a lot of i've noticed a lot of rappers maybe it's because it's the culture of rap but 
A lot of rappers are afraid to talk about them having day jobs while rapping. Yeah. Do you agree with that? That do I agree that they should be afraid of it? No, that they that they are afraid to say that they have a day job while they're rapping. Maybe it's because of how many chains I've seen rappers have. Mm -hmm. Like they're afraid to say, "Yo, I'm I'm." To, they're afraid to show that they're grinding, that they ain't got it just yet. I think it depends on your image, and mm -hmm. what because you know as as an artist you. There's who you are as a person and then there's your image. And sometimes they're one and the same and sometimes they're not. So if your image is like you've created this, you know, facade that you really got it like that, then I can see why you don't want to say like, yo, <laughs> I'm at Walmart right now buzzing it out. But, you know, it, it depends on your image because I see like especially with TikTok, it's way more common now. The... um the yo, I'm grinding it out. Like people be putting the rapping music in their Walmart jackets, like blowing up, and they they love that. Like I think it just depends on your market and, like I said, your image. Cause on TikTok I see people just in their car, like like yo, man, I'm in an old ass Nissan right now, but I got this fire song. Tell me what you think, and it blows up, and then they're off. So it just depends on your target market. Do you feel like that's been effective for you, just really being who you are and not trying to be something else? Absolutely. It's too, it's that's too much work. Like, I can't even imagine trying to keep up an image. Like, I don't. I I give it to people that do it. I it's just exhausting. I could tell. It's like, exhausting. It's exhausting. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, yo, it's you know, and it's crazy too, cause I feel like this is a conversation that needs to be held. Like, I was at a point where, when I first started rapping, like, I was like, I, t I told her, I'm like, yo, I think that if I rap, I can get more attention. Like, if I, cause I was singing a lot, I was like, I think that if I start putting up freestyles, I can get like more attention so i started out rapping but it was real violent you know mm -hmm. what i mean it was like gun bars mm -hmm. and and i eventually got to a point where i'm like i don't want to have to keep up with this image and this is not me so i'm going to shift the subject matter you know what i'm saying so i've been in a space where it's like not that i had to pretend to be someone else but i was rapping about something that was like come on man you know what i'm saying like i gotta really yeah. I, what happens when i'm out and about and people's like yo you was all that gun shit you was yeah. talking you know what i mean so um, I, I, I can understand, like, I see how it happens, but I just kind of had a realization where I'm like, yo, like, I don't want that to be what represents me because that's not who I am. So it's definitely much easier when you just be you. I feel like people just don't have a lot of faith in who they are and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't have faith that who they are is, um, interesting enough. So I just think that you're, you're interesting no matter what, really. It's just, you gotta find that audience. Yeah, and, and that, that's, not, that's not an easy thing, and you're doing it on the independent level, correct? Correct. So, obviously that answers the question, are you independent now? Are you looking to get signed to a major, or do you enjoy the independent grind? Maybe you want a distribution, or like, what's what's the goal there for uh, Nova? Um, Somebody just asked me this the other day, I get, I get this question a lot. I am enjoying the independent role right now, I ain't gonna do no label bashing. I'ma just say they gotta come correct. Like mm. that's all I'ma say. They gotta come correct. And I also understand that labels aren't really into artist development anymore. And I've oh, I've understood this for a while. So I've I always knew that the, by the time you know labels start reaching out, I got I, I'm, it's because I've already got something buzzing. You know what I'm saying? So I already understood the whole like the basically the more you build yourself, the more you could come to the table and be like, yo, I want this. I want yeah. that. So basically, like, it may be something I may be interested in the future, but I'm just getting my bargaining power up right now, pretty much. But I'm not going, like I said, I ain't going to do no bashing nothing, but I am enjoying, you know what I mean? The, what what the I'm freedom. making off, the, yeah, the freedom. the freedom. I put out what I want. I don't got to go to nobody and be like, yo, I, I, please let me release these 12 songs. I just put out what I want. And you know what I mean? So I, I am enjoying the freedom of it. But I can't say it's like completely out of the question. I think I think it's the wave nowadays too. Like the more the more power is coming back to the artist because of platforms such as Instagram, because of platforms such as TikTok <laughs> and stuff like that. And I think that's really dope. Like artists are be, are able to reach out directly to their audience and they don't need necessarily a label yeah. to do these things. I think it's dope, man. Yeah, I think it's super dope. I I, I think it's awesome. So, okay, we're not label bashing, right? We're not label bashing. But <laughs> Independent is beautiful, and you want to try to see how far you can take that mm -hmm. until the right opportunity that's, that's, presents itself. That's if I don't know, man. I don't because the thing like I I've had sit downs with with people before, like with labels, and it's like they I feel like they always trying to make me be a writer, 
Cause like maybe I don't have that. You see my image. You know what I'm saying. I'm not your average girl artist. Like I'm not. You know what I'm saying. Little skirts. I'm not. You know what I mean. Put tea. Rapping about this. Rapping about that. Like I have a real different vibe. And so when they see me, they're like, "Ooh, you such a good songwriter. I want you to write for this, this, this." And then I'm like, "Nah, I don't want to do that. Like I don't want to write for these people. Like it sounds good, but I'm gonna be in the club bobbing my head, and I know that I wrote it, but somebody else is getting the and you can't recognition, even say that you and wrote I can't even say shit. Yeah, like I'm just not interested. Like so. But let me play, I'm sorry to cut you off, but let me play Devil's Advocate. Yeah. All right, we got 50 racks for you if you write this song for us. <laughs> ah, yeah. No, see, look. All right, look. It, it, all right, here, let me say it like this. I'm not saying I won't dip into the songwriter bag. I'm saying, like, as, as far as exclusively signing me to be a songwriter, like, to me being a dungeon writing everybody's songs, I'm not with it. Like, because I, I feel like a lot of my music, like, people feel it so much because they feel it. It's not just that they're hearing it. Like somebody said to me the other day, I don't hear your music, I feel it. I was like, damn, that's deep. Mm. I don't know if they're gonna feel it if somebody else, you know, somebody else may not be able to get it across the way that I would. But however, I can write from a perspective that's not mine. I do it all the time. So I can I can see me writing for people, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got 50 rides for me? Hey, all right, got, where hey, they at? Hey, what they doing? Go. Like, how we I, doing this? Let me get song I, splits. I, I, yeah. I ain't mad at that, man. And, and I feel like a lot of artists also feel that way, too. And sometimes they just get too caught up in that songwriter bag. Yeah. Right? Where they're like, all right, I'm, I'm making 50 racks per song. I'm writing three, four songs a, a, a month, whatever. And it's like, why do I need to? And then they get stuck there. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's very easy to get stuck there. But I, I, I like the way that you're thinking because... It's also important that I'm glad you don't have the image, the typical, all right, this is what we expect, the cookie cutter, completely fake body image. And that might work for some people, right? Yeah. But it's also refreshing to connect with somebody that has their own image, their own, like, this is me, this is who I am. I'm not going to try to be somebody else just to please you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I, I think that's really dope. And one thing that I've admired about your image, and big shout out Thank to you. Boris, Boris yeah. at the door, which he told me that you guys are family. Yeah. He's the one that put me on to you during the pandemic. He was like, yo, I got, I got this family. I don't know if you want me to get a specific, but he was like, yo, I got this family member of mine. She's really dope. And uh, I, want you to, I want you to put her on Elephant Pick. And I was like, I want to see the growth. And I see the growth. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. I remember and, that. And I, and I see the growth. And that's why you're here today. But we're going to continue. Yeah. So you, 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 you just to just switch, uh, maneuver a little bit. Uh, you sing and you rap. Correct. Started out rapping, then you started singing, right? Because somebody told you you can sing. You was like, well, huh? when I put my tape out in 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 2019, it was I was like mainly like singing on my hooks and rapping my verses. So mm -hmm. it really was like both. Okay. But I was mainly like rapping, doing like freestyles over popular like old school beats on my page. But if we talking about my music, then I was I was doing both. But I really was really really in my rapping bag for the first. Do you couple. have a preference? Yeah. So like okay, songwriting wise. I like I like making singing music better. But even with, with my raps, like now when I rap, it's not as like um I don't want to use the word rappy, but it's not as rappy as it was before. It's more melodic rap now than anything. So it's kinda like I'm still a little bit singing, but I definitely prefer singing. Like Really? I love yeah, yeah, I do. Interesting. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, when <laughs> when when I the times that I've gone through your page, I've I've been a fan of the rapping. Not saying that you can't sing. Thank you. But I'm just more of a, maybe I'm more just of a bars kind of guy. Yeah. But in the era today, I think it's more hybrid. I yeah. think Drake kind of, I'm not saying Drake was the first person to do it, but he kind of broke the seal where it made like, it, it made it cool to be a hybrid artist where you're singing and rapping at the same time. That's right. And and, and I, and, but regardless, I think the music is, is, is super dope. Thank you. So now, um, Let's talk about your single, Bend Your Back. <laughs> yeah. Bend Your Back. Can you talk a little bit about that single, Bend Your Back, and, and, and how successful that single was for you? Yo, man, I, just, I was just speaking about the other day, like how it came about and everything, but Bend Your Back, okay, let me, let's, let's touch on the misconception. Everybody thinks Bend Your Back is about sex. Everyone thinks this. I mean, what do you expect? It says Bend Your Back. <laughs> if you listen to me, I said, I literally said, Pull up to the party, I'll be there around three. Like, so it's like, we're at the party. I mean, I don't know, they think, maybe they think we getting freaky in the party, I don't know what Who they think. Who doesn't get freaky in the party? That's what <laughs> parties are for, but continue, I'm sorry. But it's not, it's not, it's, that's not what I had in mind when I was writing. It's really just like, kind of just to bring back that 90s kind of house party kind of feel, or not even 90s, like early 2000s, when house parties was a thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, there's really nothing like house parties. Yeah. You can go to the club all day, but it's nothing like that. So I try to recreate like that feeling. 
And um, that's kind of what I tied to it when I was promoting it on TikTok. And so long story short, I, I, made, I made the hook. While, yo, literally it was on Valentine's Day. I made the hook while like she went in to go get me like a gift for Valentine's Day. Like mm. we was in a Walmart parking lot. And again, she was giving me one of them pet talks. She's like, yo, like you gotta put on music. I'm like, I bet, I put on a beat. I was like, I just wanna see you slow wine. When she came back out, I said, we got one. Right, <laughs> I said, we go. got one. And so boom, I put it out and um, I was real like active trying to, I wanted to make sure that I tied my face to the song. Cause I know on TikTok a lot of times if a song goes, people don't know who the artist is. And that's Big like, time. and that hurts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's, it, it, it could hurt the brand or, I don't know, maybe your ego, but it's like, I wanted to make sure I was like tied to it. To this day, there's a lot of big songs that came out on TikTok that I had no idea who the person was that. Same, <laughs> no same, idea. same. It's crazy, same. but I'm sorry, continue. No, you're good, but like that was okay. So that was, that was the first record that really was like moving. I was like, oh shit, like people really vibing to this. Like I previewed it on TikTok and let me say, man, for the artist that is watching this, don't let nobody tell you TikTok is for kids and TikTok is this and TikTok is that. TikTok has literally really, really, really helped my career a lot. Like, because the conversion rate is crazy. Like people on TikTok, they hear your music. If they like it, not only are they going to go listen, they're gonna grab another phone, Shazam it if you didn't put the title and go run it up and then go tell their cousins and their cousins' aunts. Like, it's really like that. So TikTok really helped me push the record a lot. Let's but it's, it, it was different, man. Benjamin Back is just, that's, but let's let's talk about the numbers, right? Because like when you posted that, it, and it, it, if if I'm not mistaken, it had like almost a million or over a million. It touched a million now. That's right. Talk about yeah, it. Let's, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I want to hear. I want to I want to hear about the numbers that it, it touched a million views, and I, that's amazing. That's not yeah. easy. Like I just nah, facts. Really Thank you. Like that for you. that for sure. Thank you. And, 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 and was that your first video to touch a mill? That was my first. Um, I'm gonna say that was my first like song of my own to touch a mill. Yeah. Cause I do remixes and stuff like that, but like that was my first record that I put out on my own. That how was that me. feeling? Yeah, it was amazing, man. I was I was sitting every day counting. I still <laughs> the day that I calculated everything up, like we was in the car, she was sitting right next to me, and I pressed equals, and she looked over at the screen, and I was like, ah, <laughs> and she tough. caught it right at the time. So it felt great. Like I don't know, man. It's just that first meal is like the first meal, like and, and many, many, <clears throat> absolutely many more are coming. And thank you, thank you. I wanna I wanna talk a little bit more about the labels. Um, I feel like media puts like the like the labels put a uh, well. Do you think that the labels put pressure on artists to look a certain way, especially specifically female artists, to look a certain way, to dress a certain way, to talk about certain things? Do you feel that way? A hundred percent. I think they do it to guys too, though. Hmm. I don't think it's just women. Like, I'm literally not gonna name drop, but I heard somebody say in their music that like the labels asking me to do this and do that, and I'm like, damn. Like they're blatantly saying it. Like, so I, I do think that there's 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 pressure for artists to talk about certain things. But you know, at the end of the day, like, you just gotta be your own person, and you gotta like set those boundaries. Like when you come in, you know what I mean. If you can, sometimes artists need direction, and they don't know what they're doing. So it's like if you don't know what you want to do and what you want to talk about in your subject matter, then you're gonna get blown around like a leaf in the wind. So I just think that. They just they just do the leaf blowing if you if you don't know what you want to do you know what I mean if yeah. you're not solid on what you want to talk about I think they give suggestions of course I think they'll be like yo like if you talk about this it sells because you remember they they're basing things off of statistics they're real yeah. they're numbers people you know what I'm saying and they're like yo look this has been working for 20 years yeah. <laughs> do this and and if you don't know what you want to do then you're gonna do it you know what I'm saying so I just think it's just very important for you to as an artist know what you want to talk about and what's a no-go, like what's what you're not gonna talk about and what you do wanna discuss. Fair enough. So uh, you have, would you say you have a solid following on TikTok and on Instagram, would you say that? Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, well, TikTok, I got like, I, I just hit like 160 something K, which my, my Instagram, by the way, like, just like kind of blew up out of nowhere because like, there's this song called Mileage that I put out and I put it out in maybe like October and it didn't really like do what I expected when I first put it on. Cause I'm like, damn, this is such a good record. But to be fair, I also didn't market it like as much as I should have, but I performed it at like a, a spot one night. And it was like some on the fly last minute performance that I was just like, yo, I want to say yes to every opportunity this year. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I did it and you know, she recorded me and I had the footage and I put it out and it did like 3 million views. And I, literally I went from, I was stagnant at like, I was at like 13K followers for like maybe a year. And then it just shot up to 100K, like over the course Crazy. of like a month. And I was like, damn. 
Mm-hmm. And it was and it, and it was it meant a lot to me because this song Mileage Benja Back is very fun. I love the record. But this song Mileage is it's it's like real I'm talking about real shit, you know what I mean? Like it's like me talking about how everybody doubted me and counted me out and how they trying to double back now and you know what I mean? It's just real inspirational. It's one of them songs you listen to it and it makes you want to just like go out and conquer the world. People people love the story of an underdog. Yeah. I personally love the story of an underdog also. Yeah. So I, I now I, I, as far as like so like I was I was saying um you and your and your fiance have a public relationship, right? You guys have this on TikTok. You you guys put it out there like hey, we're together. This this is what it is. Now, not trying to get messy or anything, but <laughs> do you guys find it difficult to maintain a a a, a relationship when putting so much content like relationship content on TikTok. Do you guys find that difficult? Or no, do you find it difficult? That's not messy. That's, that's a good question because I, I, I do notice like with a lot of creators that are like in relationships that put out content, I feel like it do it does become a struggle. But with us, um, uh, like mo- a lot of our content is just like regular conversations that we have on a normal or like normal stuff that we'll just be doing and it's just like, yo, this is great content. So it's like we do this thing where we never take our intimate moments and put them out for display because we don't want... God, don't, I hate those. Those are cringe. I hate when people do it, that for social media. Yeah, like any anything <laughs> intimate, like even like Valentine's Day, people are like, oh, do a vlog, do a vlog. Nah, like this is going to be for us. This is our time. We understand, like we're going into it understanding um, how to separate like the business. It's, it don't feel like a business, you know what I mean? Mm. Like it feels fun. It's something we're doing together. Like we just, we understand that we can't, make everything content you know what i mean like we're not just gonna be late like oh let's make this content like yeah. if, if it's if it's not flowing naturally it's not flowing and we just don't do it you know what i'm saying we don't force nothing so like it hasn't but now don't get me wrong this grind that we're on right now because we're, we're doing a lot you know yeah. what i'm saying like i'm pushing my career we're pushing our career she's pushing her career so with there is times though where we're like all right yo listen like damn like I know we've been together every second, but I miss you. Like, yeah. let's kick it for a few. And we're just very, very conscious people. So we just, we just, we try to stay alert. That's, that's, that's very interesting that you found the right balance. Because sometimes I see relationships on TikTok and on Instagram. I'm just like, oh, I just want to throw up. Like, yeah. they're doing too much. Because sometimes you start getting like, we never really, we never got attached to the views. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, we have videos that did very well, but. We never got to the point where it's like, all right, well, how crazy can we go next? Like, listen, <laughs> what are we gonna do now? Like, we we never like it's we understand like you just can't take you can't take it too far. Like, do you, do you guys you guys do pranks also and stuff? We like do that? do pranks. All we right, do so do pranks do, sometimes. Did you guys ever have a prank that went wrong? No, because we don't take it too far. Okay. Like I've had we've had ideas. Like I've had ideas of like, yo, I should do this, and I'm like, nah. nah I'll chill out. I be thinking, yeah, like I was gonna fake rob my sister at the gas station because she worked at the gas, <laughs> and I'm like, nah, that's crazy. That, that could go viral for the very wrong reason. And that's what it, that's the problem. I think people just start thinking thinking too much about how viral something could go, and they don't think about like how much it's gonna affect. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So like we're we're real conscious of that. Okay, okay, cool. So now let's talk about uh your your upcoming projects. What can we expect from Nova Big Stepper in the future? His. What can we expect? Yeah, like I, I wanna know what 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 we in for. Yo, you know what you know what I love about me as an artist? You don't know what to expect. Mm. I'm like I'm different. Like I'm just so versatile. Like you don't know one day you're gonna get a a a record where I'm really just rapping, like just talking my shit, and the next day you're gonna get a record where like it's a love song. Like I could play two completely different records for you right now, and you wouldn't even believe it's the same person. But I know for sure though, I've been I'm in a space now where, especially since Mileage has been doing what it's doing, I'm in a space now where like I definitely like wanna going forward make sure my music is more like motivational and that I'm actually saying something, you know, like I can have fun and have the fun records where we talk about turning up because, you know, that obviously like that works too and it's and I enjoy it, but I'm in a space where like I want to be more conscious. I'm going to be more conscious in my music, like not saying I'm going to be super like boom bappy about it, but that's really what I'm leaning towards. So you can expect like music with like substance, like always. Like though. more introspective. Yeah, yeah. Like, and okay. you know, just, um, Timeless music, like my music, like even if it don't blow up the moment I put it out, I know down the line there's gonna be a song. Yo, I be having people so old listening to my music, man. You would look not so old, <laughs> so old is crazy. But like people be commenting, like yo, I'm 65 and I love your music. And to me, that's a, that's real a flex. Following. That's a real following. Yeah. So like, so you can expect like 
really good music. You know what I'm saying? Like, rather that's singing. You just got to wait around. That's why I tell my people, it's like, you just never know what you're going to get. It's like them 50 Cent Machines with the toys. You don't yeah. know what's going to come out, but it's going to be fire. Like, Dope. so it's going to maybe singing, maybe rapping, maybe both. So where do you see Nova Big Step in five years? That's a good question. In five years? Yo, man, stadiums. I see stadiums. Five mm. years is a is a is a long but a short time. But like with the way my mindset is now and how I'm just so tunnel vision, I really see like stadiums of people with their phones out. Like this is just really what I see. Like I see I see success. I see like happiness. Cause I always I always chase happiness. You know what I'm saying? Like it's I, as long as I'm happy doing what I'm doing, like everything else will follow. So like I just see I see a great time, man. I see like Fire. the the following building, and not just the following, cause you can have a following and not have the support. Mm. So you know, and that's that's one thing. A big misconception is that because you have a big following, you have a lot of support, and that's not the case. People so with hundreds of thousands of followers that can't so they don't pack merch. out SOBs. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely, you know I mean? yeah, absolutely. And and so I I see my community growing even bigger than it is now. Like I try to like be. Real personal with like my supporters. I don't call them fans. That word is so weird to me. Yo, all right. I I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta dap you up. For that. Yeah. Cause that's exactly <laughs> what I tell everybody. I don't like calling people fans. It's, I call people supporters. I feel like if if I call you a fan, that means I'm up here and you're down here. Yeah, that's how. It now feels. we're here. You just support me, so I appreciate you. That's yeah. all it is. But no I facts. Had to, that, it sounded just like me just now, and I was like, damn. Fan like is that. more like somebody saying something, hating in your comments, but they follow you. You ever see that? Like somebody say something like negative in your comments and you go to their page and it says follow back? It's like, yeah, it's like, that's a fan in my eyes. Like, you a fan. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you a fan. But like, supporters, like, um, I like that. Yeah, like I said, I definitely see myself growing, growing my supporter base bigger and just connecting with them. I go live a lot. So I'm able to literally be like, yo, Sasha, what's up with you? How you feeling? Yeah. You know, and I think that's very important very. as an independent artist is that you don't, I feel like, and I had this misconception when I first started. And again, Stephanie, which is my fiance, I'm gonna say Stephanie, so you know what I'm talking about. You have a song named She's Stephanie like, too. Oh, you know about the vibes. Come on. Yeah, man. yeah. I dropped that for her on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I know. Yeah. But uh, all right, before we get out of here, I gotta, I gotta hit you with a quick, uh, you got to finish the sentence. I'm going to start the sentence, and you got to finish it however you want to finish it. You ready? She's right, looking at me it. like, damn, don't set me up. Nah, let's do it. All right. I can't leave the house without... My phone. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't know what I was going to say. Yeah, I was like, Cause, yo, the my way phone. you pulled out, I was like, damn, you was about to back out. Like, no. Nah. Right. My favorite thing to eat is... Pizza, but I be trying not to be basic, bro, so I'm going to say... Too late, you already said pizza. No, 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 I'm saying, um, 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 what's that, what's that? See, Filet mignon. See, you trying to be too fancy with it. No, no, no. I'm playing pizza, pizza, for real though. One thing that drives me crazy is. One thing that drives me crazy is. There's so many things that drive me crazy. You got the disgusted face right now. Yeah, what drives me crazy? <laughs> Grown men commenting underneath my videos just hating. Like, you so old, you could be my dad, bro. My, you my dad's age. Why are you hating on me, bro? I, that drives me crazy. In the famous words of uh, Rico Richie, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. Yo, it's so funny you say that, right? Cause yo, one day, right? My, my, this is at a time where you bend your back is doing numbers, but everybody loves me. And I said to Steph, I'm like, yo, they say if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. I don't really see no haters. Like, am I not popping? Like, what, <laughs> what am I doing? And it's like almost literally like after I said that, it's almost like I attracted them. Then I started seeing like hey, little haters here and there. Right? Yeah. And you see what happens? It could, it could be a positive manifest. It could be a bad yeah, manifest. Yeah, it could though. It works now, both ways. If I didn't make music, this is the last one. If I didn't make music, I would. Um, damn. I. Oh, yo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, you know what? Actually, I think I think I had this conversation. Before. Okay, if I didn't make music, and this is like really hard to choose because I can't even imagine myself doing nothing else, but probably be like a detective or something. Like interesting. Yeah, I think that looks it's cool. You know what I'm saying? You come in, step around detective the crime Nova. scene, see the vibes, what happened. All right, cool. I think this happened based off of the little splats right there. That means the person was standing there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Special Agent Nova. I like yeah, that. I like yeah. that. It almost sounds like a, like a show, like a movie and stuff. But uh, yeah. before we get out of here, um, I want you to let the people know how they can reach out to you, all your social media, yeah. the music, where it's available, all streaming platforms. Let them know. This oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you. Listen, man, I'm Nova Big Stepper everywhere. Don't follow them fake pages and don't write them back. Nova <laughs> Big Stepper, N-O-V-A-B-I-G-S. 
S-T-E-P-P-A, everywhere. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm everywhere. LinkedIn, um, that's how you know it's real. Yeah, I'm everywhere. And so um, the music also, Nova Big Step, but it's one word. Don't put no spaces. Nova Big Step, one word. I'm everywhere. Also, if y'all want to get in tune with the couple page, we was talking about the couple pages, Steph and Nova, S-T-E-P-H-N-O-V-A. And my wife, man, y'all follow my wife, bro, Mrs. Big Stepper, M-R-S-B-I-G-S-T-E-P-P-A, man, on all platforms. Y'all know the vibes, man. Tap in. Mileage, run the numbers up. We at like 300K right now. So you know what I'm saying? Let's run get that to a mill. Run up, baby. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you for coming to Elephant Pick. Yo, thank you we for having me, man. You, a big stepper. But before you get out of here, you know you got to drop some for us, right? You know you got to go in, yeah, there, in that course. studio and drop some for us, huh? Of course. Thank you for coming out, Elephant Pick. We out of here, baby. It's another one down. Peace.